probably wasn't three wise men. Tradition says that there's three just because there was three gifts, but we don't really know. The Bible doesn't tell us, and that's okay. We don't have to know everything this side of heaven, but there could have been dozens that came. But we know that the Bible tells us that there were three gifts that were given. And what is interesting about the passage in Matthew chapter 2, it says that these wise men entered into the house. Everyone say the house. So we don't really know that it was the, you know, there, unlike the nativity scene shows, there in a manger. We don't know if he was, how young he was. Most scholars believe he's between the ages of one and two, and that really messes up our nativity scene. That means we have to get rid of the wise men. You know what the wise men's clothes were made of, don't you? Porcelain. Just kidding. Anyway. That's because our nativities, never mind. I was just seeing if you was awake. But this kind of changes my whole visual. If Jesus was a toddler at this time, I don't know about you, but it kind of changes my vision of the wise men and Mary Joseph and baby Jesus as a toddler. I don't know about you, but I used to judge people with two-year-olds. I did. Looking at restaurants, looking at the floor, what a mess. They were loud, didn't get their way. How many know what I'm talking about? Did you judge someone until you had a two-year-old? And when you had a two-year-old, things changed. You realize you simply cannot negotiate with terrorists. You just, it just doesn't work all the time, but you'll do anything you can because they're out of control. And you're like, I'll give you anything you want. Here, take my iPhone. Listen to Baby Shark for the 90th time. You can have candy. You can have anything you want. Please, I'll buy you a pony. Just stop what you're doing. Can anybody relate to that? You know what I'm talking about? They used to call them the terrible twos. We changed it when we had our kids. We called it the terrific twos. We thought we'd put a positive spin on it. Which... This changes the whole visual of what's happening. If he was a two-year-old, a one-year-old at this, at this time, when we read the scripture in Matthew 2, verse 10, it says, when they saw the star, and it's talking about the wise men, they were filled with joy. They entered the house, everyone say the house, and they saw the child. Notice the terminology, the child. Everyone say the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and they worshiped Jesus. They opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And of course, these are unusual gifts in our day, but they were common and very useful gifts, very valuable gifts for their day. And also, these gifts would have had symbolic nature that was prophesied to who Jesus would become. Unusual gifts, gold, frankincense, myrrh. And of course, next week we'll be talking about the third gift of gold. We'll tell you more about that next week. But last week we talked about frankincense. And we talked about how Jesus, as our great high priest, could identify what we were going through and he understands. Aren't you glad we have a great high priest? Can I get a good amen? We have a great high priest, and today we're going to be speaking about one of the other gifts, and it's called myrrh. Myrrh was a valuable gum-like resin, and it was a substance actually that was used 17 times in the Bible. It was a very crucial ingredient in making of the anointing oil in the Old Testament. But also, it could be used as an antiseptic. For example, You know the story when Jesus was on the cross and he was in so much pain and they offered him wine mixed with myrrh to help deaden the pain and he refused it because he wanted to bear all the weight of sin, the full force of weight of our sin. But what was commonly used for myrrh was to embalm people, embalm the dead. In other words, This gift symbolically, and this is what scholars, a lot of them agree on this, 
that this was symbolic in nature that since it was helped to prepare the body in death, we would see Jesus as a suffering servant who would be the Lamb of God who was born to die to take away the sin of the world. I'm glad that we have Isaiah the prophet, 53, and he, he's going to give us a prophetic passage. And I, I love sharing this passage because it shows you how myrrh could represent a suffering servant who was born to suffer on the behalf of forgiveness of our sin. But I want to start with this first. How many football fans do we have in the audience? How many football fans? Can you raise your hand real? There you, real, there you go. So what if I was able to predict the two teams that would win the next Super Bowl? And you would say, well, perhaps you just got lucky, Pastor Jeff. Well, what if I could predict the two teams and the exact final score and which team actually would win? You probably would want to become my friend and get really close to me. But imagine, though, if the world's still here and football is still popular 700 years from now. Everybody say 700 years. Now think about that. 700 years, generations beyond. What if I could predict the two opposing teams in the Super Bowl, the exact score at the game 700 years from now? That would make me a prophet like no other, wouldn't it? I can't do it, but it would make me an amazing prophet. But essentially, this is what Isaiah did, something very similar. He prophesied 700 years before the birth of Christ, a very detailed account of what the suffering servant Jesus would endure for our behalf. And I, what I want to do is I want to show you the problem. We all have a real problem, and I'm going to talk about that. But I'm also going to talk about the price, the price that was paid for the problem, our sin problem. So we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 6, and it says this. All of us like sheep. Somebody say sheep. Yeah, like sheep have straight away, we've left God's path to follow our own. And when Isaiah says that we're like sheep, he's not giving us a compliment. He's really not. I mean, if he would have said, all of us like lions, or all of us like eagles, that would have been a compliment. But when he calls us sheep, this is what he's saying. We are not the brightest crayon in the box. That's what he's saying. Because he's calling us sheep. You can train a lot of animals. You can train a dog. You can train a bird. You can train a hamster. You can train a pig. You can even train an elephant. But you can't train sheep. Have you ever been to the circus and watched the trained sheep show? I don't think so. Sheep, it is not a compliment. And Isaiah says, all we, like sheep, have gone astray. And sheep are known for three major things. Here's the first one. They're basically known that they're weak. They're weak animals. They're defenseless. They don't, they don't have horns. They, there's not much they can do to defend themselves. The second thing, they're witless. They're not very bright, are they? <laughs> so you go, where are you going with this, Pastor? And the third one is they're wayward. They're wayward. I want to show you something, and some of you may know this, some of you may not, but if you look this up, it, it's true. In the year 2005, in Turkey, 1,500 dumb sheep followed each other off a cliff. 1,500. 
follow each other off a cliff. Now, you would think after the number one and the second one, the third one, the fourth, fifth, sixth, so on, that one of the sheep would say, you know what? This is not a good plan. 1,500 sheep in Turkey follow each other off a cliff. Now, the bad news is 400 of them died. The good news, it was the first 400 that died. And the rest live because the 400 made a sheep pillow when they fell. Seriously, that's what happened. You can look it up. So when Isaiah calls a sheep, it's not really a compliment. Sheep are wayward and they wonder. And, the, and what Isaiah is saying is that that's kind of like how people are. We're like sheep. Oh, if I could just buy this thing, if I could get those shoes and these clothes and that fancy car and that nice house, I would be happy. But no, you're just in debt. It didn't cause you to be happy. Oh, if I could just have this experience, it would be great. No, it hurts. Everybody is, is drawn into this big sheep pen. And Isaiah says, this is what we're like. We're weak. We can be witless and we're wayward. We'll, we'll just go on our own. But you know what? Isaiah says you need a lot of help because you tend to go away from God's path and you choose your own. And if you think about it in your life, isn't that true? You see a lot of people who start out serving God and then all of a sudden, what happens? Where are they? They're not at church anymore. They don't, they don't attend any longer. They've kind of gone their own way, and they're getting weak. And Isaiah says 700 years before the birth of Christ that he would be oppressed, that he would be beaten, that he would be treated harshly, that Jesus, he would not say a word, and the Bible says that he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. I don't know if you've ever been hurt, mistreated, or rejected, overlooked. You may have been criticized, unjustly, misunderstood. And I want to tell you today, Jesus understands. In fact, the Bible says we have a high priest who sympathizes. He understands what we went through. He was despised. He was rejected. The Bible says he was a man of sorrows acquainted with the deepest grief. The Bible goes on to say, we turned our backs on him and we looked the other way, but he was despised and we didn't care. Yet it was our weakness he carried. I want you to get that. It was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God a punishment from his own sins, but he, Jesus, our Savior, the suffering servant, was pierced for our rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be made whole. He was whipped so that we could be healed. And that's what Jesus has done for us. A lot of people will will come to this season and they look at the baby Jesus and they, they rejoice because he's come. But if you could just get the whole magnitude of Isaiah who's saying 700 years before it happened that he prophesies about a suffering servant, one who would go through such excruciating pain for us so that we could be saved. I'm not sure all of us understand the magnitude of his suffering. I'm not sure that everyone understands the depths of his love. If you did, you wouldn't casually say, well, I'm a Christian. You wouldn't casually just go to church when you felt like it. I'm preaching good now. You wouldn't say, well, since we have food, we might as well just give thanks for it. No, there's a God who loves so much that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth on him should not, what? 
perish, but have everlasting life. I don't think we fully and wholly comprehend what he did for us, but I want to tell you our reasonable response is to give ourselves wholeheartedly to him. Today, I, I want not only to tell you, but I want to show you in just a few minute video that what Christ did for us, and it's probably the most realistic video that has ever been made. If there are children in the room, uh, if, if you're um, in maybe high school, if you're in junior high, you're fine. But I, I want you to know this is hard to watch. But I, I want you to see this video because as much as I could try to explain it, unless you really see it for yourself, it's, it's hard to understand about this, this suffering servant. And so those that are watching online, I, I want to close out your service today to tell you that Jesus loves you so much. that He suffered the pain that was so great. And the Bible says that for the joy that awaited him, he endured the cross. When you get that picture in your mind, I, I want you to realize that he loved you so much. Our response should be, God, I give myself to you 100% wholeheartedly. I want to serve you and I, I want to love you all of my life. So we'll close online service right now, but we will continue the service here live. And I want to show you this video.